Okay, so the second part of uh, section 2.1 has to do with change and comparison. Right. Let me talk about change first. Uh, change is the easier of the two ideas. Now, um, everything changes in life pretty much. Right? Um, so uh, uh, the price of uh, uh, gasoline, for instance, changes from week to week or from day to day sometimes from hour to hour. And so how do you describe the change? Well, uh, you can talk about uh, what is called the absolute change, or you can talk about relative change. Let me explain. This is not hard, okay? It's quite simple. Suppose that the number of um, coronavirus patients increased from 34 to 37 in one local hospital, say, all right? Uh, so what percent increase uh, is this? 34 became 37, right? The absolute change has to do with a numerical difference. Okay, now the numerical difference is a fancy term of saying what's the difference? What, what, what's a, the result of subtraction? So 37 minus 34, clearly three more people um, were, three more patients were found with the coronavirus, right? So three is the absolute change, absolute meaning um, exactly what number? Relative, you know, the, the word absolute and relative are um, antonyms, right? They're the opposite words, okay? So we have absolute and then we have relative. Absolute have to do with a numerical difference. Relative has to do with a percentage, okay? Now the question is, what, um, what do we use as the base of the percentage, okay? And that's a great question. And the answer is, the answer is that you always use the old number. See, this is the old number. This is the new number. And because the reference is what was before the past, then the old number, the old value should always be used as the basis of calculating the relative change. So the answer to this question is, okay, 37 minus 34. This is the absolute change of three and you divide it by 34, the original number. This is three over 34. Uh, all you are doing is just dividing the top by the bottom, okay? And it turns out to be, if you take your calculator, you do three divided by 34, and you get this number 0 0.0882 dot, dot, dot. Uh, for our purposes, for this class, I am not going to set a, a hard, um, and a definitive rule for approximation or rounding, okay? So you round at a reasonable point here. I think um, I would uh, maybe stop with the two non-zero numbers in here. So this is, and by the way, you notice here 0 0.0882 is equivalent to 8.82%, right? So uh, I can just sort of um, round off the two and you can say this is approximately 8.8%. And this is the relative change. The relative just means percentage. Okay, so the relative change is the percentage change based on always the old number before the change. And so you can say that the uh, number of coronavirus patients increased by 8.8%. That would be a correct statement. All right. The second application is to describe differences. Now, um, the first one went from old to new. There is a time sequence, right? The time goes from old to the new. For comparing two things at the same time, you don't have the old or the new. So you can use uh, either one of these uh, numbers as, a, as the base. And that makes it a little confusing, but let me give you an example. My neighbor's car is $50,000. Mine is 40,000 and therefore I am jealous. Okay. What well, you may be, but here are the two questions you can ask about this. How much more is my neighbor's car compared to mine? This is the important phrase, compared to mine, how much more is my neighbor's car? The second question, how much less is my car compared to my neighbor's? Okay, now the reason I am highlighting circling these phrases is because these uh, circled phrases gives, give me the reference number, give me the idea on which number to use as the base or as the denominator 
of the comparison. Okay, now the absolute, dif there is a thing called the absolute difference. And it's just like before, absolute difference is the numerical difference between my car and his car. And so 50,000 minus 40,000, of course, it's easy to, to know. The answer, the absolute difference between those two car values is $10,000, okay? So the car's price or the car's value differ by $10,000. Now for A, how much more is my neighbor's car compared to mine, right? So compared to my car, this phrase tells me that my car price is the reference number. So for this relative percentage calculation or the relative difference calculation, you divide the absolute difference, 10,000 by the price of my car, which is 40,000. And that turns out to be point Two, five. So what this is saying is that my neighbor's car, uh, by the way, this is 25%, okay? So his car costs 25% more than mine. Oh, if you're wondering why I'm using the masculine gender here is because I'm physically, I mean, I'm literally thinking about my neighbor, um, Fred and his car. He's got a nicer car than mine. So that's his car. Okay. You can use her if you like. Uh, part B, B is different. B says, how much less is my car compared to my neighbors, right? Compared to, or uh, how much more um, relative to my neighbor's car. So this gives me the reference number. The reference number in this case is my neighbor's car. So the absolute difference is 10,000. This time the base is going to be 50,000, my neighbor's car price. And the answer turns out to be 0.2 or 0.20. And that is 20%, okay? Again, you have to make sure you have to know you have to know how to go from the decimal to a percentage and vice versa. Okay, and for calculations, you always always use that the decimal representation of the percentage. And once you get the answer in decimal, you convert that to a percentage. All right. So this one is saying that my car costs twenty percent less than his. You say, wait a minute, why is that 25% in one way and 20% the other way? Well, that's just the way it's going to work with percentages. Okay. Remember on the front part, we talked about the basic ideas of percentages. Now we are getting into some of the more confusing aspects of percentages. The percentage changes when the reference number or the base number changes. That's one of the most important things you need to learn in the first part of chapter two. Okay, of versus more than. So this is uh, uh, this is a uh, the fr uh, something that you have to be careful about as you state these sentences in English. Okay, and so be sure you identify the difference between of and more than or less than. Okay, let's say you have two products here. Okay, so you have product A and the product B. Uh, a costs $40, okay, whatever this is. But B costs $120. Now, B costs what percent more than eight? Now, let's see the difference is, of course, $80, right? Yeah, it, there's an $80 difference. This is called the absolute difference. And absolutely, this is right, okay? In other words, uh, B costs $80 more than A. And that number is absolute. It doesn't matter what the reference point is. The difference is clearly $80. But then when you talk about percentages, because percentage is a relative notion, that percentage depends on what the base number is. Okay, that base, the reference is the um, what makes this relative. So B costs what percent more than A? Well, more than means that A is the base number. So you can always always identify the base number because it is preceded, preceded by the uh, words like than 
or of. Okay, so anytime you see the word then or of, what follows is the reference number or the base number. All right, and that's something that you may want to keep in mind. All right, so B costs what more than A? So for this one, you divide the relative difference, uh, sorry, the absolute difference 80 by 40, the reference number. And the answer is two. What is two? Well, remember two is equal to 200%, right? 0.5 is equal to 50%. So uh, to go from here to here, you multiply that two by 100 uh, and that's 200%. So you can say B costs 200% more than A. Or you could say the cost of B is now watch, watch, watch for this. The number, the word here is of the cost of A. The cost of B, that's 120, right? 120 is what percent of 40? Let me say it again. 120 is what percent of 40? This is a different question, slightly different question from the first one, because the first one compared the relative difference with reference to the price of A. This time, we are comparing the price of B to the price of A. So for this, you divide 120 by 40, and that's 300. Uh, sorry, that's 3. But 3 is equal to and I mean exactly equal to 300%. So the answer is 300%. So the, uh, while B costs 200% more than A, the cost of B, the price of B is actually 300% uh, of the cost of A. Hope it's clear. Next, A costs what percent less than B? Now, less than means we have to figure out what that uh, absolute difference is relative to the reference. Remember the reference number follows less than, the word than. So then you divide this by 120. And in this case, you get 0.666, blah, blah, blah. And that the six repeats and that's 66.7%. Or you can round this off to 67% if you like. Uh, I am not going to be picky about that. Uh, it costs 66.7% less than B. Did you get that? A costs 66% less than B because 80 divided by 120 is 60, uh, well, 0.666 repeating. But the cost of A, which is $40, is what percent of the cost of B, which is 120? For this problem, you have to divide 40 by 120, and this time it's 0.333, which is 33.3% approximately, rounding off with the uh, one decimal places, one decimal place. All right, so yes, as confusing, we will get slightly more confusing when we talk about decimal, uh, the uh, percentages in the next section, but there are, these are the four different ways that here is one, here's two, here's three, here, four different ways to compare two things. And each of these has different numbers, but each of these is actually correct. All right, B costs 200% more than A, and the cost of B is 300% of the cost of A. A costs 66.7% less than B, while the cost of A is 33.3% of the cost of B. Each one of these statements happens to be correct. All right, um, just a couple more things in this lesson. Number two, if an item is 25% off, off, then you pay what? Yeah, you pay 75% of the regular price. Think of that as, you know, here's 100% of the price, this is the regular price. If it's 25% off, what they're meaning is they are knocking down one fourth of the price, which is 25%, all right? So in this case, you can subtract 25 from 100 and you are paying 75%, okay? Suppose a pair of nice shoes is on sale at 20% off. Sounds familiar, right? 
the sale price is $100. What was the original price? Okay, so it says 20, you know, you have a pair of shoes here, you know, whatever. And um, you like it and there's a price tag and it says, well, it's 20% off sale, okay? And the price tag is after the sale, you say, well, $100. Do I get 20% off of the $100? And the answer is no, 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 okay? This is already after the 20%. It's the price after the 20% has been taken off. So what is the regular price? Price, right? A typical person would calculate 20% of 100, that's uh, 0.2 times 100, and that's 20. And so $20, $20 must be the price of the discount. And so the answer is 120. Uh, that is what a typical person would say. I want you to know this is wrong. Now, don't erase it. Sometimes it's very important for you to see the wrong way of doing things. And this is one classic example. We'll dive more into this in the next section. But what's wrong with this? Well, first, check this. Okay, If the original price is 120, you know what 20% of 120 is? That's $24. You didn't get $24 off of 120 because that would have been um, less than $100. So you can't, this can't be the right answer because uh, again, if it were $120, then 20% off would be less than $100. So how do you get the right answer? This is the key, okay? What we talked about here above this question is the key. And the key is this, if you have this, the pair of shoes and say, if this whole price is 100%, 20% off means, you are paying 80% of the original price. So the correct way to think about this is, and actually the correct way to ask the question is, 80% of what number is 100? Okay, because we are looking for 80% of the original price, which happens to be $100. So the answer then would be 100 divided by divided by 0.8 because that's 80%. Remember, we're looking for a reference number. This is, oh, sorry, this is not A. The part, 80% part is 100. Reference number is what we don't know, the base number. 80%, uh, this is the P, of course, you know, 0.8 is what you would write. So the um, to find the reference number, you do division, 100 divided by 0.8, which is 125, okay? 125 is the original price of these shoes. Now let's check, you know, what is 20% of 125? That's 0 0.2 times 125, and that turns out to be exactly $25. You knock off $25 from 125, the answer is going to be $100, and that is indeed your sales price. So this is the correct answer, right? Okay, we will uh, discuss more on these issues. But meanwhile, this is the end of section 2.1. So you should proceed to answer these quiz, quiz questions for section 2.1. Once you think you are done, you can uh, answer these questions online uh, in a quiz for section 2.1 up to three, uh, Attempts can be given to you and you should again get a perfect score on this quiz. And then you can struggle with and complete your homework for 2.1. All right, great. I hope you will have good rest of the day.